All right, guys, go to War 32 here. Check it out. So I'm sitting here in the Freedom Office. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's start this thing off by saying I am not a big fan of the ATF. And why am I not a big fan of the ATF is because what you have that's legal today by a stroke of a pen or somebody getting a wild hair up their ass, they can make illegal tomorrow. Now, there is no getting around it that they've been pushing the limits on these pistol braces for years and years. Uh, we started out with the, the KK uh, blade. Uh, there's some other ones in uh, Mission First Tactical. And by the way, I still haven't forgotten about you. Uh, but then we have the SBA three brace. In my mind, I think that's absolutely the coolest thing. Uh, and they use, and we go about this whole deal uh, saying that it gives the handicapped the better ability to control an AR-15 being in its shorter. Uh, they're able to wrap that thing around their wrist and control it with one hand as a pistol is designed to do. But unfortunately with the ATF, the way they are these days, they're so wishy-washy in what's going on left and right. Now, I've received a bunch of emails as of late the last day or two talking about this big old thing. Uh, I think Tim at the Military Arms Channel has put out there as well as I saw this deal with the Iraq Veteran 888 on Instagram talking about the BATF is in the process of redefining AR-15 pistols, AK pistols, etc., as AOWs. Now, if I read that, that means that uh, I'm in big danger if I have an AR-15 pistol because if they do this, then I'm going to be a felon if I, unless I register that firearm with them under the NFA. And uh, that's kind of a unique uh, spin on things. It really is. Uh, but and, and then I saw a bunch of videos from some other folks. Uh, good friend, Jared, uh, he made a video about it. And one of the things I did do is I did go to Iraq Veteran 888. So I went, go to my Facebook page for more details. So I did. And what I saw was the letter that everybody's talking about from Wiley, this law, law firm who represents a lot of the firearms industry. And they're very reputable. But what I wanted to do before I did a video in response to all the emails that I've received on this thing and what's my opinion on it is I wanted to educate myself. So I, I pulled up the letter. I read it. And after reading the letter, I actually called one of the largest fire manufacturers in the country and talked to a representative to get their opinion on it. And they checked back with me uh, through their legal department and basically told me, well, they're doing this for a reason, but it's not going to affect us and we, we're not really concerned about it at all. And I'm like, wow, so you're not concerned about it. You make millions and millions of dollars each year selling these AR-15 style pistols and AK-47 pistols. Well, why am I concerned about it? So I decided to go ahead and do a video reading this letter from Wiley to you guys so that you would have a better understanding of what's going on. So here we go. The ATF interpretive change restricts handgun imports. That's the key word here, imports, and may require NFA registration. All right, I get it. <laughs> Emails coming in left and right. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives has recently, I'm really getting upset here, has recently change the manner in which it interprets the statutory and regulatory definition of handgun, thereby further limiting the types of firearms eligible for importation. Okay, uh, so let's read that again. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and has recently changed the manner in which it interprets the statutory and regulatory definition of handgun, thereby further limiting the types of firearms eligible for importation. Importation. These determinations are not public, so it's difficult to regulate a company or community to assess and track shifting agency positions. The Gun Control Act 18 U.S.C. 922I broadly prohibits the importation of all firearms into the United States. However, so long as a firearm is not military sur surplus nor subject to the National Firearms Act, provides a limited exception for those firearms considered by the ATF to be generally recognized as particularly suitable for a or readily adaptable to sporting purposes. 
Wow, that's interesting. Over the past half century, the ATF has issued several studies and criteria on how it evaluates whether shotguns, rifles, or handguns qualify as sporting under the law. The handgun factoring test is the most straightforward of these, with a point tally system that rewards larger, bulkier handguns. If a handgun receives 75 or more points, it is considered sporting and approved for importation. Um, okay. So basically what this is, is they are saying that certain manufacturers are no longer allowed to import firearms that don't fall into a certain category. One of those is the uh, HK-91 pistol, which weighs eight pounds, got an eight and a half inch barrel, shoots a 308 or a 5.56. So uh, there's a lot of slippery slope here, but when I'm told by a large manufacturer not to worry, I'm not going to freak out about it, okay? Uh, in some of the new letters, ATF has begun listing the following objective designs when making its evaluations. Incorporation of rifle sights, utilization of rifle caliber ammunition like 5.56 or 7.62, incorporation of rifle length barrel, the weapon's heavy weight, ability to accept magazines that range in capacity from 20 rounds to 100 rounds, which will contribute to the overall weight of the firearm and overall length of the weapon, which creates a front heavy imbalance when held in one hand. And an HK-91 doesn't have an SBA-3 brace on it. It's just a, a pistol grip, a mag, and a foregrip. The ATF also noted that the most recent private ruling that the above design features are neither binding on future classifications nor is any factor individually determinative the atf explained without elaboration that the statutory and regulatory definitions provide an appropriate standard in classifying the firearm Whew. the atf concluded that a firearm that is too heavy too heavy or otherwise not designated designed to be held and fired in one hand demonstrated objective features cannot be a handgun. So anyway, uh, and, and talking about revocation of existing import permits, consideration of certain handguns as any other weapon. So uh, the new interpretation of handgun definition could have additional side effects or significant effects on manufacturers and gun owners. And it's, manufacturers who are trying to import and gun owners who have purchased these imported firearms this is where i think it's bs is that now they could could doesn't say they were going to the interpretation they could uh now consider these as any other weapons uh the interim final rule on improper agency guidance and there's a bunch of other stuff i'm gonna leave you in there with it but in any case the big thing here guys is i come away from this and read before you assume, okay? Because what I'm trying to do is convey to you actual facts. And this is the letter from the, the, the law firm. This is not coming from the ATF. You guys find anything from the ATF on this thing that says that your AR-15 pistol is now in any other weapon, please let me know because it'll be interesting to actually get that and see it. And I'll illustrate it on here and I'll say I'm wrong. Um, and that's it. Uh, does this mean that we need to relax and stop telling our senators and electing individuals who are not pro-gun? Uh, hell no. You need to be doing that every single day. Fight for your rights. It's a con constant struggle. As I tell people who are not firearm owners, I was talking to a lady last night, and she's talking about I, I'm all about gun control, and I handed her a 30-round magazine, and I said, see that magazine right there? If Biden wins, he wants to incorporate a law where I have to register that magazine and I have to pay $200 tax stamp for each one that I own. And she was like, what? And that's the whole thing. These individuals, they never educate themselves on actually what's happening. But I just wanted to read that. Y'all let me know what your thoughts are. I don't like it. But it's not something that I think we necessarily need to be worried about. But you always need to be fighting for your rights. And if you see something where it says the ATF is going to take your American-made AR-15 pistol and turn it into an any other weapon, you let me know. I hope they don't, but I think the time is coming that they probably are. And we'll see it here, I would say, within a year.
unfortunately, uh, would be a good time for someone to invent something that takes that AR-15 pistol and makes it legally a rifle or something like that. Anyway, y'all let me know what your thoughts are down below. I just wanted to have this little chat with you. It's cocktail time. And uh, that's about it. So we always end them like this. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Uh, don't forget to check out kb32tech.com. Also, there's a bunch of links to Amazon down below and the stuff that I use in the channel. And uh, God bless America. God bless us men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not freedom. I'm talking about the men and women in uniform who fight for our constitutional rights as it was written by our founding fathers. I'm out of here. Y'all be good.